I wish good things to you who's watching this. I am Alexi, and today we have a double exciting stream because I'll be showing you two matches from the World Team Carcass on Online Championship preseason. We have, first of all, a friendly encounter between my team, Team Latvia and Team Ukraine. You can see all the players on the list. I am not playing today because I believe I have a much more important uh, task to do over here. I will be not an impartial uh, commentator. Now I will be rooting for my team. Uh, and uh, after that, there'll be one and a half hours from now, we have, we're gonna show you Spain against Catalonia, also principled rivalry between two strong teams. And this will be the last stream of uh, the World Team Carcass and Online Championship preseason from me. I'll be taking a little bit of break and then I'll be back with the actual World Cup around uh, April 15. And um, let's do a bit of a pre-match analysis here. Uh, so, lineup-wise, let me actually just um, have a look at this. Lineup-wise, we have uh, Table 1, Napalm I versus Samuelson. So, let, actually, I'm going to do it differently. So, both teams, Latvia and Ukraine, have uh, some new players. So, Napalm I, Krishna, uh, Margot, only Denver, all, they're all from last year's team. We see uh, a, a new player with a screen named Silent Monk, who actually played in the European Championships, uh, so they're not new to Team Latvia, but they hadn't played at the uh, world level before. And uh, Edjus Couches with a screen named Esedzus, one of the two, one of the three Carcassonne brothers, actually. That's the brother of the current gold medalist of the Mind Sports Olympiad, Chris Couches with a screen named Krishna. I put them to play on adjacent table numbers, of course. So um, they're coming back after a lengthy break, uh, but before they were a formidable force in the joint Latvian plus Lithuanian team back in uh, 2021 and of course in the and of course they helped uh, significantly with the third place that Latvia got at the 2021 European Championships as well. Ukraine also has some old players, has some new players so Fan Alexen, um, Samuelson have been around the block for quite a while, quite a while. Um, Pavel Breen participated last year, and uh, I think, uh, Tanya, you also participated last year, but she didn't play that much. She increased her strength and her rating really a lot during the last year, and certainly will be one of the players to watch. And uh, a couple of new players, uh, Devaka and Nazario77, those have achieved good results in the uh, Ukrainian National League, uh, so in the, in the Major League and in the Super League, that's a project for online leagues that uh, Ukraine has. Let me just try and... Uh... When school is canceled and all the kids are free, it can only be... Oh, um, I'm just trying to turn on my stream on another device but i'll be back in a second trying to still juggle the new things hi helge hi napa my napa my you should be focused on the game don't watch the stream uh, they, they're of course on table one and then after that we're gonna have uh well we're gonna have a little preview of you of catalonia versus spain uh, there, there's going to be only a 5-on-5, five five, uh, a couple of new players for Spain. So 2020 Rafa is the reigning uh, Spanish champion in offline format, uh, represented Spain uh, back in October at the World Championship. And of course, previous uh, three well-known players, Madcan, McCrack, Oscaridis, they were all on the Spanish team before. And Joaquin Calzado, the POC, which is short for the postman of uh, Carcassonne, happens to be the new captain of Team Spain. Uh, so very curious. Oh, um, wait, Spain, Romania? What? What am I looking at? I'm looking at a different lineup. But anyway, these are basically <laughs> uh, Spain, Catalonia. Yeah, so um, actually uh, the POC is not playing today, but all the other players are playing. Uh, Locuelo is also well known. They have appeared on my stream a lot of times. Sexy one hasn't 
appeared that uh, much. Uh, but they have been, again, playing in the Spanish League quite a lot. Right, high Glovier, high Peach, high 19. Uh, so a four for Catalonia, Borbrici, Casim, Lola, Carquinhos, Visitor Q were all on the team uh, before. And the play with a screen name P. Capella is a uh, newcomer to the best of my knowledge. So we might have a peek at their game. But now the more important match, the one which I care about the most, Latvia versus Ukraine is starting. And of course, I need to juggle some communication with my team. No, don't worry, not communication about the move, just communication about table setup and stuff like this. And I decided that the most interesting table to watch would probably will be only Denver against Fan Alexen. Fan Alexen had had a strong performance um, last year uh, as as part of a team, and uh, only Denver also was one of the MVPs for Team Latvia. So we're going to start with that duel, but we'll try to have a peek at everyone. Of course, very would be very curious to observe this pl player, Nazario77, but we will do that a little bit later. So, the game between only Denver and Fanalexan has started, and I'm delighted to see that the Latvian is already ahead on the scoreboard, four points, playing the Green Meeples. Questionable choice of Meeples, but actually, since Green Meeples are camouflage, this will make it a bit harder for uh, our opponent's eyes, this will make it a bit harder for Fan Alex. And so, excellent choice of Meeple uh, color for only Denver, and an early farmer for early Denver, that is interesting. Uh, and already eight points on the scoreboard, just how I like it. And green meeples, very confusing color. Do you see this farmer almost blending in with the terrain? This means that Fan Alex and will have a harder time making out the uh, meeples on the map. This will take a little bit extra cognitive power from them, and hopefully this will lead to them making mistakes. So I only dislike green color when my opponents take it against me. But when my opponents do it themselves, it's a completely different situation. So only Denver now getting even a third city cap. And if I were to play with the green Neeples, I would have actually dropped a farmer over here. It looks like a really good field. But maybe, maybe uh, the dinosaur here, uh, if you can look at his profile picture, it's a bit, um, it's a bit small. Uh, the play with the dinosaur avatar uh, is thinking that he wants to entice Fan Alex first of all to drop a farmer somewhere here, and then when Green finishes the city here, Green will drop a farmer here and uh, reclaim a two versus one majority. So I assume this is the logic. In the meantime, we have two well developed monasteries for Fan Alex and only one well developed monastery for. Uh, only Denver and an excellent tile now for the Ukrainian. Trying to start uh, finish a monastery, well, succeeding in finishing a monastery, then starting a new road. And whoa, that is some extravagance by Maris here. Uh, that just happens to be his actual name, it's just easier to use. So with the idea of taking a lower scoring um, meeple, foregoing, um, foregoing a stacking opportunity, so of course the standard equity move is to go over here and just simply stack two monasteries on top of each other. But I have to say I rather like this decision, except for the placement of the road, I think it's more precise. Actually it's much better to point the road downwards if you ask me, for a variety of reasons. Um, actually, maybe not. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, well, anyway, uh, the the placement of the road is secondary, but the uh, point of this road is that uh, uh, the point of this road. Oh yeah, the point of this monastery is that it leeches off um, the opponent, so it makes sure that it gets an extra point when red adds stuff to his city and it gets an extra point and it just did get an extra point as Fan Alex added uh, stuff to his road. 
difficult actually easy decision for well not an easy decision but uh so we see that with this move here only denver is trying to block um this city and actually if he draws a curve he might block three meeples at once that would be something this is exactly what i'm hoping for as team captain for latvia uh, but fan alex draws a defense tile so he's probably debating between two moves one is of course just simply completing this city which no harm in that at all but there's another move which i really really like it is delaying the completion of the city but instead going over here with the city caps like this and dropping a farmer. I honestly think this is actually stronger because there are still four Dorito tiles left that fit into this square. And then when the Dorito tile is drawn, then this meeple will come back and add eight or even ten points to Fanalex and scoreboard. And this hypothetical farmer that I just put over here will go right into this field through here so this would be a very efficient way of playing and unfortunately for me and for fan alex and for only denver fan alex actually finds this move uh it's it's a very strong move um very unfortunate that it happened and i think only denver here is a bit hasty so he tries to use this tile to try and block this square and i rather like the idea but i would have waited for a better tile i would have first either continued my city or continued my monastery and um and then later try to block with row tiles. But at least now only Denver can... Actually, yeah, what can he do? It's a very, very interesting mm, idea here. So he can either start a new city over here, legit, a new city over here, but instead he goes for a blocking attack, which I rather like too, because there was this threat. Let me just move the map a little bit. There was this threat of uh, Fan Alex like, getting a city cap or something, finishing the me... Finishing the city and dropping a farmer and um, this move made sure to prevent that in the meantime the ukrainian is, is is now taking the lead on the scoreboard took two points and at the same time made it harder mm, to finish this uh, monastery for uh, green because green has only a one tile available to do that as two of the right-handed dagger tiles have already been drawn and now an interesting decision for fan alex actually i know what the correct move is and it is this one exactly so the ukrainian showing some discipline he drew a dorito which could have been used to finish the city and complete the plan that I was talking about earlier but it was more important to protect the square because with any row tile only denver could have gone here and blocked this square trapping these two meeples and uh, the ukrainian decided that it is unacceptable so he chose one of the uh so he chose to use this dorito as a defense tile because now there are three triple city tiles that fit into that square which translates to a very high chance of actually redrawing it and there's still three tiles that fit into this square at least at the time of the decision making there were two dorito tiles and one splitter tile like this now of course as only denver drew a dorito tile and started a city at the top there are only two tiles that fit into this square but still a good chance for red to eventually draw it in the meantime bad news for my teammate as uh, fan alex gets more points and gets a meeple back but more importantly fan alex drew the one and only remaining tile that would have fit into this square so this means that only denver will not be able to finish this monastery unfortunately for us and this meeple will be trapped there with only eight points i mean not a horrible number of points but still i don't like when uh, our opponent draws good tiles Now the Ukrainian, the Ukrainian is thinking, decides to start a new city. I don't actually think that's a very strong move because it's so vulnerable. I mean, as only Denver, I wouldn't go here. I would just actually use this as a blocking tile. We just need to decide how to rotate it exactly. But the important part is that we can't let our opponent off the hook too easily.
whilst they're thinking, I need to remind you all to meeple the like button. This is important for the algorithm and for um, my positive emotion and for making sure that more people find out about competitive Carcassonne in general. Also, in case you're here for the first time, then subscribe. I won't be streaming in the next two weeks, but I will be streaming a lot for the World Team Carcassonne Online Championship. Which starts on April 15th. So only Denver chose this approach to blocking, which actually makes sense given that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, only three Dorito tiles have been remaining, are remaining, and one of these Dorito tiles is necessary for Fanalex to finish this here. And only Denver, uh, just as Fanalex was trying to block him, drew a very important tile that gives him eight points and a meeple back. And honestly, I might have considered dropping a third farmer here as green, but Mod has decided that he needs to keep meeples. I think it makes sense, but he will need to compete for the farm eventually because Fan Alex will easily... I mean, Fan Alex will probably will go over here at some point. In the meantime, the Latvian is back ahead on the scoreboard. S scores five points for the road and starts a new city facing uh, downwards. I like green's position here. So even though red has more potential with this city being finished and with this city even being finished, the red has uh, some tile problems because red needs a Dorito here, a Dorito here, a Dorito here, kind of like a Doritos everywhere. So a lot of these city tiles and red can't really extract much um, value from road tiles. Red can extract, I guess, some value from city caps, but not anymore as red uses their penultimate meeple. Only Denver plays uh, a strong move. Uh, trying to restrict this square at the same time attacking this square. And uh, this works out pretty well. Even though Fan Alex was able to defend this square. Uh, a little imprecision here by only Denver, I think. Uh, this was not the four points that we were supposed to take, but also I don't get to complain because he takes four points. And also he takes four points in um, with the tile that Fanalex needed over here. So that is nice. That we drew one of the, t one of the tiles that, Ukra that, the, that the Ukrainian needed, and now this means that uh, only one tile, one tile only, the Dorito with a shield is left to fill the square. And I think if red does draw it, red's chances aren't great. However, red has some really strong setups still available. So this tile plus this tile would give red at least a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12 point city and a 9 point monastery. And this would also bring this farmer into the field through this route. And uh, if that happens, red can actually survive one trap meeple over here. That ain't no big deal. In the meantime, um, the dinosaur faced player. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean this. Like the player with the dinosaur <laughs> avatar. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, I mean, it's it's a very cute dinosaur. You can't see it close up, but you have to just take my word. He drops a farmer and reconnects to the field and reclaims a majority. In the meantime, Fan Alex some, scores some quick points, gets more points over here. Now also draws a monastery. Uh, mo uh, only Denver draws a monastery, tries to block this square. Presumably, the Ukrainian has to defend it exactly like this. There's still two tiles that fit into the square, so it is co very, very possible to complete that city or at least threaten the completion of that city so that the Latvian has to chase it around and block it, which is exactly what he's trying to do. And it's already a um, mini win for the Ukrainian because the Latvian was forced to use a tile which is worth three points. He didn't take three quick points over here. Instead, he used this as a blocking tile. Now also use the city cap to gain his meeple back at the bottom. Fan Alexand draws a... Uh, cow tile, the last remember, the remaining triple city with the road. How is he going to use it? Is it time, perhaps, to go over here, 
drop a farmer and then hope to draw back-to-back -back curves to equalize the field. It has to be a move that he is considering. It's not a good idea to complete to continue this city. I was pretty sure. Or did he calculate something that I didn't? Because it seems to me that it's now harder to finish this city, not easier. Because now this city requires three tiles, at least three tiles to be finished. Whereas before, it maybe it was possible to finish it with two tiles. So now... Uh, Maris draws the final Dorito and this is fantastic for us. Fits into this square and this meeple here is permanently trapped. Beautifully played. Just beautiful tile draws. Um, my team had saved up some money to bribe board game arena developers and it is paying off nicely. You might say that like red is super unlucky in um, not drawing one of these tiles, but this well, and this is sort of kind of true, but it is not entirely true because red drew one of these tiles, red drew this tile, but because green had created another blocking threat earlier on, red was forced to use this tile to defend, and uh, that's why creating threats is important, and uh, green is now reaping the results from that. So this new city of green is being uh, harassed from the top. Green can't really do much about it and he's now thinking where to take quick points and he, he's probably thinking either to take three points over here, but knowing this player, I think he'll opt for a positional move and I might even agree with him. Maybe he wants to go over here and take only two points, but at the very least eliminate some field connection opportunities because in the future, uh, red can draw a curve, drop a farmer here, draw another curve, and maybe connect this farmer into the field like this, through the outside of a curve. So that is possible. What else is possible? Mm. I think uh, only Denver might go over here as well, try to create some pressure against the square, but no, now he switches to the greedy approach and decides to take three points and getting some psychological advantage. Look at this, one point ahead on the scoreboard. So, soon we, okay. I'm going to try something real quick. You might hear some sounds temporarily. I will, I am preparing a surprise for you. So I will, uh, I will uh, turn back the sound soon enough. Hey, can you hear me? The person, my special guest, we're live. Okay, my chat, try to, my viewers, try to guess whom I have as a special guest. Uh, let me just turn on the sound. Can you, can you say hello to everybody? So I'm going to give, I'm going to give my viewers a minute. Try to guess who speaks like this. Maybe speak for a little bit longer and uh, may, 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 maybe say, maybe say who you're rooting for in this game and this will give a bit of a hint. Yes, there is a very good reason for that. I expected that you would answer this. <laughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll get your I'll get your image up and running soon enough. Um Oh, you say you cannot hear the guest? Why? This is weird. Maybe, oh, maybe, maybe that was like a bit from an earlier thing. Okay, can you say something again, my special guest? Hmm. Yep. Can hear the guest. Okay, I, I knew this, this would happen. I knew that this would happen. And... Uh, Ah, I know, I know what to do with this. I know what to do with this. 
say something now. Say Hi guys. Hi everyone. So okay, this should work. Thanks for inviting me here. Yes. No, I'm not alone. I don't have imaginary friends. I am fully functional. <laughs> uh, so can you tell again who you're rooting <laughs> for to give a hint to our viewers who you are? I'm rooting not uh, for the teams that you are rooting today. Uh, I'm rooting uh, for the Ukraine. And I have some reasons for that. Yes, and very quickly, KK Spammer, the chat again that I have. Uh, Sergei Zaharenko, also known as a Zaharik, uh, the organizer of the Carcassonne Champion League and captain of Team Ukraine. Uh, so uh, we will be balancing each other out in our commentary. And I will add your picture right now to the stream. Uh, by the way, to everybody, if you have yeah, any cool. questions to Zaharik, then please ask them in the chat. I assume many of you may, may ha might have questions about... Um, uh, Carcass on Ukraine or the Champions League or Team Ukraine in general. And we're going to go back to the game. So, uh, Sergey, we're watching Fan Alex and, uh, Fan Alex and against only Denver and there are mm -hmm. like 10 tiles remaining. Uh, what do you think of the position? And... Um... About the posi position, I see that um, one out uh, is still in the game for Fan Alex uh, City in the center. And um, I really don't know if it will be enough for uh, even with this um, city to to win this game for uh, Fan Alex because it's really good uh, field for green, uh, big ruin, uh, two monasteries. Um, I'm not sure that that city uh, at the bottom uh, can be closed. Uh, only six tiles are left the game i don't think it can be closed especially not after only denver drew this starting tile so this mm -hmm. is really looking good for the latvian well fan alex and now did draw a curvy tile will he now put it over here i presume that would make sense and he might actually even meeple the six point road mm. Is it really makes sense? Uh, he uh, he will lose the big field. Uh, Not necessarily. With nine points. Yeah, but I mean, he okay, can, he can, he he can still, still get the can, that goes can, over. Oh no, he yeah. can't. Yeah, he can. Uh, he can uh, if we he plays two tiles um, and try to connect, not using the city tile, but may, maybe some roads or fields to connect this uh, third, third tile. Okay. Uh, not not on the right connect, but um, on the left maybe also if he can't um, find the last out for his city. Yeah, so maybe it will be a good uh, chance to play on the sixth road, but maybe without Meeple. Yeah, and then, try like... to connect to this field with the last uh, Meeple. Well, if we are going to connect as the Ukrainian here with the field with the last Meeple, maybe we just like go over here on the right and drop a farmer here and try to road a, get a road tile to connect over here. And then maybe we don't even care about these pieces. Maybe we just care about the main field over here. Uh, so let me see. One, two, three, four. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's still two curves remaining, if I'm not mistaken. So it might be wise for Fan Alex to actually go over here and just drop a farmer like this, and then hope to get a meeple back from here, finishing his city, and then get some sort of roll tile to go over here and then to draw either a curve uh, or a straight line to connect all the other meeples. And I think having the control of the, the big field should give the win to the Ukrainian, but he decides against it. Oh, he can drop a farmer there. Oh, he connected. Wow. Yes, yeah. he connected there, but mm -hmm. he can drop another farmer so that he can get um, the Dorito tile and connect one more guy over here. I think he should do it. He can drop it on the inside like this. Oh, wow, wow. It's so interesting, interesting, yeah. 
No monasteries with the road. Yes, so only this one out he can use to connect. And um, okay, he decided not to do it. Uh, that's a bummer. I mean, I almost like, I know that I'm Maybe. rooting for Latvia, but it would have been a spectacular move. Like it would have, because I don't, oh, but that's a spectacular move. I absolutely love it. By the way, Fanatics oh. would have gotten the thing, mm -hmm. but only Denver is now taking the advantage of there still being, I think, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two curves remaining. And I think he will now be able to connect over here. Fan Alex, of course, Meeple's are oh, with only Denver no. draws yeah. one, of the, one of the curves. So excellent, excellent move here by Green. And I think this will enable the Latvian to win the game, if I'm not completely mistaken, because at least Fan Alex is now 13 points ahead on the, ahead on the scoreboard. Uh, these two ruins are roughly equal, and maybe the Latvian has a, a bit of an advantage from this monastery over the road. But if only, only Denver goes over here, then surely he... Uh, would have enough to win because this field is worth 15 points and this will put uh green just just over the edge really uh, uh you know really a complicated situations with this field uh there are fields that are not connected yet <laughs> there are some strange connecting spots and uh, it's really hard to um analyze all the situations especially when you have one or two minutes for that i really prefer to have more time for situations like that because it's really really hard to understand uh when you can uh, win or lose in these situations I agree, but that's why uh, players need to be good at, tile, uh, at time management. They need to count the points and tiles earlier in the game when it, during the easier situation so that you know what the point situation and the tile tracking situation is whilst you're facing these difficult decisions and you can just devote uh, these minutes not to these technical moments of tile counting and points counting but to actual thinking strategy. Here, Maris uh, completed the connection to the field. Now he has a majority over here. Now Fanalex actually has drawn a great tile and I think he might even be able to win without the field because this means he drew the last curve so this 9 point field and this 12 point field will not be merged and he decided to simply take a 6 point road and he will able he will be able to deploy another meeple later only Denver can only add a couple of points in his city and uh, Fan Alex Sen, I think, w might be able to edge it out this game by a couple of points without even connecting to the main field. The Latvian will have overall an 18 points advantage on the field, so he'll have 15 points um, for control of his main field, and he'll have 12 points versus 9 points over here, so that's plus 18, but I don't think it's going to be quite enough. It could be very, very close. Fan Alex draws... I'm not sure that it will be enough for Fan Alex, uh, because there are two um, mostly equal ruins. Um, there is uh, mostly equal fields on the top, and big field for green, and also two monasteries. Oh, I there's another monastery, that... yeah. I kind of forgot about yeah, this guy over yeah. here because the green camouflage, camouflage meeples completely fooled me. A four-point move at the end for Fan Alex and, and I think it's all because Alex is afraid, Alex's fear of risk. She, he should have gone over Farmer. She should have dropped a Farmer over here. Uh, he should have helped with this tile, but he chickened out and paid the price. Which, as a streamer, I'm less happy with because we didn't see a spectacular content move. But as, but as, but as, but as captain of Team Latvia, I'm perfectly um, happy. So for you, Sergey, because again, it's a learning experience where you're kind of practicing over here. Maybe it's a good idea to talk to your teammates so that they're not too afraid of risk. He's like, if you have to drop a farmer, you have to drop a farmer. And we see only seven point difference ahead of for a month. You know, maybe um, it was only one um, chance for Fan Alex to win this game. So um, probably he should um, take this risk. For sure he uh, saw this move because after he plays this uh, city tile, he was thinking uh, for some time uh, to place a meeple on there. When he plays... Um, a regular curve road, he was thinking about placing this um, field meeple. Yep, he was definitely thinking about this, I have to agree. Uh, so, yep. well, we have another good news for Team Latvia. So, Napalm I edged it out against uh, Samuelson. 
four points, so Latvia has two. Uh, I can say you uh, all of their um, results. It can it can be uh, quicker, I think. Oh, yeah, that would be nice. And in the meantime, yeah. I'll turn on the second mm -hmm. game from Napalm Eye, because these are also quite two uh, similar mm -hmm. players, I think, in their rating and their level of skill as well. Oh, yep. Samuelson is in good shape, mm -hmm. 630. Nice, good for him. Also, Napalm Eye, 580. Yeah. That's also close to his peak. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, yeah, so Samuelson lost his first game. Uh, also, Divaka lost his first game against uh, Sedzus. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul Breen uh, won his first game against Silent Monk. And Tanya won the first game against Krishna. Congratulations to Tanya. Oh, wow, that is, I would say, quite an upset. I mean, any anybody winning against Krishna is an upset. Oh, could, could you say that again? So, so who won, <laughs> Pavel or Silent Monk? Pavel won uh, oh. the first game. And then Divaka? And oh, Divaka lost uh, his first game. Uh -huh. And uh, Margots? And uh, Margots won uh, versus Nazario. Got just it. in two points. So it's currently four Latvia against two Ukraine, but of course, a reminder to our viewers yeah. that all yeah. games are best of three, so it doesn't matter that much. Before we, uh, I mean, of course, it matters, but uh, none of the teams have uh, uh, achieved a point on the match scoreboard just yet. That's why technically the score is still 0 0. But I need to uh, thank you so much for PCI19 for uh, sending through the support of uh, 20 bucks. Very much appreciated. Uh, yes, and uh, of course. Uh, it makes me very, very happy and makes it easier to continue doing these live streams and uh, videos. So thank you so much for that, Pichan. Nepamai has 37 points and Samuelson has 47 points. So which doesn't look very good for the Latvian because also Samuelson has an extra meeple. But I see a lot of blue on the board, so maybe the Latvian has something... Um, to compensate for it. There are 13 tiles remaining in the deck. So how do you assess this position, Zaharik? Who would you rather be here, uh, blue or red? Uh, really, really good uh, opportunity for blue to... Oh, okay. He already connected to this field. Um, and now uh, what we can see... And also green reconnected. So now uh, this field is equal. Uh, actually, one blocked city for red. Actually, before we continue, I think this field is not equal because look at this. This farmer here is enclosed for nine points, this blue farmer over here. Whereas this bigger oh, field... Oh, yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, yeah. This yeah, bigger field sure. here with two meeples belongs to Samuelson and uh, the Latvian has only mm -hmm. one uh, meeple over here. And this bigger field is much more open and has one, two, three, mm -hmm. four, five, six cities in it. So it's worth 18 points. So this means that currently the Ukrainian is ahead like um, nine points on this field. And to compensate for that, the Latvian only really uh, has this. I see only. Yeah, sorry, I can see only five cities, so oh, right, it's... Right, right. Uh, yeah. The bottom yeah. city is not on the board, and... so that's why. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So at least three quick points for the Latvian. So a really similar situation. Uh, blue has uh, a small uh, field on the top. Uh, they have uh, mostly equal ruins, uh, equal roads, um, and uh, the monastery uh, for blue. Uh, so this monastery uh, is compensating the difference in the score, so really, really a close game. But I hope that meeple advantage for Samuelson will help him to win this game. And he is indeed trying to utilize this meeple advantage, meepling a six-point road at the bottom, but Napamai immediately draws a quick four-point move, scoring with a city cap. It is going to be quite close. I think the Ukrainian still has the advantage, uh, simply because the more developed uh, fields... What is he going to do now? He simply chooses to discard this monastery. A straight line here for Napamai. Now, are we desperate No just good yet? moves for him. Can we just go over here and drop a farmer like this and hope to get 
Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's still one curve remaining, I think. If we go over here, like drop a farmer, we can mm -hmm. do the kamikaze technique trying to... A ninja farmer, I think that's called. Trying to connect through the outside of a curve. By the way, it also happens to be my least favorite field connection technique. Because it's just so blunt, so just... <laughs> uh, so I, I like the technique... I like the technique, but uh, without uh, possibility to block it from the other side. Yes, and of course, if uh, blue goes over here, which they very well might, I mean, given how long they're thinking, they're thinking about exactly that, then, um, I mean, uh, Samuelson could draw a crossroads, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, there are no crossroads remaining, but at least Samuelson can draw mm -hmm. a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wait, 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 wait. There are actually very few row tiles remaining. I mean, in theory, he could draw like a straight line or something and then block the square so that the curve doesn't fit here anymore. But I don't think there are any straight lines remaining. And um, still doesn't seem like it's gonna work though. Yeah, because look at this, the dagger tiles, there are also no dagger tiles remaining. And it's just, I think it's a very easily blockable connection no matter what. So he shouldn't go there, but I think what Napalm I could do, maybe somehow set up another field connection. Is that possible? You know, he decides to simply discard this tile. Oh, away from mm, so movement. great. So great tile for Samuel. Awesome. Amazing it's, tile. Uh, Six point field. Yeah, and amazing. Also completing the city. Just fantastic. Absolutely. And quite unfortunate here for the Latvian, as he is able probably to score four points over here, but he will not be able to... Um, do anything else and now that i think i think it was a mistake by the latvian he should have placed this straight line over here to prolong this field and his farmer would have scored three extra points because look at this this city now is not even in the latvian's field but uh so i think we may have missed a witnessed a bit yeah. of an oversight yeah yeah you're right he just uh skipped this tile but he can use it th three additional points so certainly something to uh, talk through with my team regarding field vision and maybe simply the whole concept of definitely try to not discard tiles. This is something that I try to tell to my viewers again when I do viewer games analysis, like mm -hmm. you, that you never discard a tile. You, you try to extract at least some form of value from it. And I think uh, Giannis should have thought for a bit, a little bit longer and tried to squeeze that extra bit of value Napalm Eye, now with a quick point tile, um, nothing much really to do, just maybe add two points to his ruin and then, or take two quick points for the road, but otherwise it looks like we will need to be accepting defeat for this one. Blue takes two points, now 50 points for Giannis, and the players will now have one last tile each. And as you see, Samuelson draws the curve and is now able to take advantage of this field. So in addition to not taking three points with that straight line, Giannis also foregoes extra three points by mm -hmm. allowing his opponent to make a six point move at the end. Uh, so I think this mistake cost the Latvian five points exactly. Let's see if there is, uh, if this impacts the game result. I don't think it will. I, I think um, Samuelson will win this a little bit more confidently, but we need to wait until the points are counted. Don't refresh, don't tell me, Sergey. I keep silence. Okay, looks like it's gonna be pretty, pretty close. Not quite five points because this nine point field, of course, is quite devastating. And the six point field, especially nine points from Apamai. And this little guy at the bottom is gonna score three points. So eventually. Maybe only, ch uh, only chance was to connect to this big field, but uh, it was really hard to do. With their yeah, yeah. tiles that uh, remain in the game. It, it was technically possible, but in order to connect, it, it was such a low probability. So he needed <laughs> to go over here, and then he needed to hope that Samuelson would draw one, the one and the only tile that wouldn't be able to block. So Samuelson would need to draw this one, the triple city with the road. And then on the next move, Napalm I would need to draw this curve, and this would just. It is, I think, too low of a probability. So. 
Probably the best mm -hmm. route for Napalm I would have been, again, like expanding this. So these would have been five extra points. And then trying to gain the extra point by simply drawing some more city caps before Samuelson does them. Or at least um, making it so that Samuelson would not have been able to drop a farmer. So something like this. I think there was still a path to victory for Giannis uh, without having to rely on this. Uh, ninja farmer field connection but he would need to get quite a lot of help from the tile deck and of course it immediately needed to start with this farm expansion at the bottom i just uh, want to say that uh samuel san anatoly uh currently is a really really good shape um he's leading in our ukrainian Kyrgyz online competition and only one uh, round uh, is left in our uh, online championship. And the only way Antoli can lose the first place uh, in this year, if he um, uh, if he lost uh, the game against me in the last round, and Basiluk will win 2-0 um, versus... Uh, I need to check with whom he is playing. So, um, just theoretical chances for Samuelson not to win uh, our um, online competition. Alrighty. So, 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 yeah. So, 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 I, so, this is consistent. So, like, he, his rating is actually not an accident. So, he's actually in good shape. Which is not great news for Giannis, but the great news for Giannis in this game is his two blue monasteries right here uh, in the middle. And this position with 56 tile remaining does indeed good, look fantastic for the Latvian. As uh, Samuelson gets his meeple back and a very, very early farmer. Um, Napamai, of course, uh, takes some quick points next to his monastery, prepares to get his meeple back. And uh, Samuelson now blocks Napalm Isle's Meeple at the bottom. It's not a complete block because there's still two tiles remaining that fit into this square, but it, is, but it is quite hard for the player with the blue Meeples to complete the city because even if he draws one of the two remaining tiles that go over here, he will need to then draw a bunch of other tiles to complete the city and uh, Samuelson will have more than enough time to actually try to connect the city and block further. So what else are we having? 10 points of, on the scoreboard for Napalm I versus 7 for uh, Samuelson. 7 point Ruin, which actually still has some potential to be completed if he so chooses. Then a little 1 point city here for Samuelson, which will now be increasingly vulnerable as Napalm I scores 3 points and creates a blocking platform against said city, putting his... Uh, advantage to now four points as Samuelson scores two extra points for the road so players now playing pretty fast I expect to move from Napalm I which goes over here and restricts this meeple I think it is the strongest move you go over here and you just don't meeple the road you just leave this alone so by the way we have one uh, more result uh paul Breen won in his second game so we have a uh, one oh for ukraine so yeah so pavel won his second game uh two zero against the yep. newcomer silent monks unfortunately we were not able to witness this uh game soon enough and any other results and now uh, all other games are still in progress. All right. Ah, yeah, yeah, Yanis, Yanis. Again, we see the same type of mistake where he uh, discarded this tile completely. Uh, and um, instead of actually trying to attack this meeple, so it, it didn't matter, but I think this pattern of, um, of, of not extracting value from seemingly useless tiles is something that we will need to talk about about as a team but at the very least he got his monastery meeple back he's now seven points ahead on the scoreboard samuelson great move meeples a ruin for five points yep. at the bottom mm -hmm. and in the meantime also threatens to block the square which would prevent blue from connecting over here and equalizing those points and napalm i now cannot defend i mean he can only like go over here to make it a bit harder to block but actually what i think he should be doing he should go over here 
and meeple this road and try to be like really really aggressive on the point scoring protect the monastery and then try to draw a dolito with a road tile or something like this and meeple this little city piece upon completion because as blue we will be getting this meeple blocked and we just need to be super aggressive in point scoring to compensate for that what do you think sergey uh, I think that uh, he's thinking about defending the city connection and uh, defending his monastery spot. Um, I like this move without Meeple. I, I really don't like to play uh, so aggressive that you prefer to do. <laughs> I know that. Um, but also it uh, was really nice move to play it um, to protect his monastery and then try to uh, take the road. Would have worked, point would have road. totally worked. Told you, told you, told you. Uh, so you see, <laughs> the move that I was suggesting, mm -hmm. of course, Neipama immediately drew the tile in question, but now he left a four-point road up for grabs, and guess who's going to get that road? I presume Samuelson is going to get it eventually, but now, of course, Samuelson is forced to equalize Neipama's city because before uh, the player with the blue meeples can, drop, uh, can, can get a city cap, get eight points for the city, and drop a farmer like this. Of course, Anatoly will need to prevent this, but... but um, Going back to this move, Sergey, the reason I'm not such a fan of protecting moves like these is because at this point, there's only one tile available for connection anyway. So you're, so you're like relying on winning a coin flip as blue. And if there were two or three tiles, I would see more value in these sort of protection moves. But eventually, it seems to me just... Um, like not the best use of a tile and told you Samuelson now picks up value from the empty four point road and it's a big swing because mm -hmm. Napamai is not getting th these four points and Samuelson is getting these four points it's an eight point difference just because of not playing aggressively enough so Sergey did I convince you to play more aggressively <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, by the way, I was thinking you are saying about the road that uh, Napalm I uh, played with this regular curve, but to meeple it. Um, uh, no, 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 no. I, yeah. I, I, I meant the one yeah, that, okay, that yeah, Samuelson yeah. just took. Yeah, I meant yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now I understood. Yeah, uh, yeah, I agree. It was really a nice uh, suggestion, a really nice um, move to play it to protect monastery and also to nickel the rod. By the way, uh, do you see the situation with this um, city connection? Uh, Somewhere else, um, uh, uh, got all of the tiles uh, that he can't block the connection and at the same time uh, Napalm I uh, uh, has already um, got two tiles to block that connection so for now uh, I think this uh, city connection spot will Ooh. will have really huge impact in the game because city can became bigger and bigger And again, uh, Napalmai got the tiles that someone else can use to block the connection. Yep. Well, uh, in the meantime, speaking of blocking, so Samuelson managed to block Napalmai's monastery and the shared city. And mm -hmm. uh, the situation is actually now looking much better for Samuelson, even though Napalmai is eight points ahead on the scoreboard. This eight point difference is actually completely mitigated uh, through this unconnected ruin over here. Napalmai taking just two points uh, from the scoreboard and Samuelson just keeps expanding his field. And that's the problem. This long-term meeple advantage will make sure that the Ukrainian wins. Like, I think it's a, it is almost an impossible, it is an incredibly difficult position to come back from. Uh, for Napama, just having this sort of meeple shortage, having this blocked monastery, and having this ruin at the top, which is unlikely to get completed. So he drops a farmer, but actually I don't like this move. I think it is way premature. Uh, all Giannis is doing is just burning a meeple. If you ask me, because he needs to consolidate first, he needs to get back this meeple, or he needs to, um, you know, score some quick points over here or score at the top. Because what's going to happen after he dropped a farmer? Samuelson's going to drop a farmer here, like this, 
and that's it the farm is going to be equalized and there will be no real good reconnection spot also samuelson can actually now play a super super annoying move after napamai has continued his road he can either go for the classic you know <laughs> eight point city but instead he does the move which i think is way stronger he blocks napamai's road yep. permanently it's so so annoying because either napamai gets a straight road which goes over here and then he can put it over here but then there is no tile that left fits into this square or napamai first gets the one remaining triple city with the road and goes over here scores three points of the road connects to the ruin but then there are no tiles that left to fit into this square so i love this blocking pattern where there's technically still a tile that goes here and there's still a tile that goes here but there are no two tile combinations that can fill both of these holes and um yeah, and now Samuelson create a um, blocking spot for blue uh, field connection. Yeah. And just one curve, uh, he needs to, to block it. Mm. Oh, I don't, I, well, I'm not a fan of this. Yeah. I think <laughs> I should have gone over here and desperately tried to protect the field connection, but Samuelson doesn't care. Samuelson just decided Why? to score Why? points. He will get punished. I really do not agree with that. Okay, maybe uh, he's going to reconnect or maybe just place, uh, yeah. yeah, something like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, he, he just going to reconnect. And this is, of course, very unfortunate mm -hmm. for the lad fan. But you know what? Now that I think about this, uh, there was still a way for the lad fan to win if like Samuels is not careful enough, maybe close to the end of the game blue can like mm -hmm. drop a farmer over here and then get a monastery and then actually win a two versus one majority but this is now a dream of the past as anatoly is quite technical just drops a farmer before it's too late i think that uh anatoly can um uh, will be ready for this situation. He will create some additional connection spots in case of that, and maybe even place a third uh, meeple even before Blue uh, will play the second meeple in the farmer. I I know that Anatoly uh, likes to to protect his uh, big field um, with uh, two meeples advantage, so. Yeah. Mm, he can do that. So he does like to over farm. I think as um, Napalm, I, of yep. course, we, we could take quick points here just to exchange uh, with quick points that Samuelson just took over here. But I think at some point from Samuelson, we're going to get a straight line and he's going to go over here and meeple this farm and get a monastery and unify all farmers three versus one, leaving just no chances for the player with the blue meeples whatsoever. He yep. now gets a simple mm -hmm. Dorito tile with a road. He might choose to, I don't know, like meeple a small road over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, actually, no, because there are no curves remaining. Or he might choose Me to. Me personally, I will, I will block that, that, that connection. I see no, mm, no other reasons not to block it. Yeah, that actually makes sense. He uh, has really good uh, field, second field. Okay, he decided not to do that. He decided to simply... Maybe destroy. because of the meeple advantage. Okay, now actually as Napamai, we're going to try and get back into this game. We're going to go over here and we're going to pre-build a monastery spot. We then, uh, we're going to place two straight lines over here and over here. And then we're going to try to draw a monastery and get nine points, nine quick points with our one meeple that we have. And then at the very, very end, we're going to try and sneak another farmer like through through here or through, or through some other spot. And then maybe, maybe then we can win as a result of our blocked features. So blocked road over here, blocked monastery, blocked ruin at the top, which slightly exceeds the value of the block ruin of Samuelson at the bottom. Um, huh. So he instead just chooses to get an extra point. Well, then Samuelson, I think, now should put this game away and go over here and farm basically the stuff that we've been talking about. So the thing that you've been suggesting, he should drop a third meeple and um, mm -hmm. control this field with an iron fist. 
No, maybe the only way for uh, Blue to win this game is to close his big ruin. I'm not sure it uh, uh, if if it's possible, but I'm not sure if it's possible. Only but... three three tiles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, it, just, just by looking that. at it, I think I think most of these tiles have, have gone out. But well, let's have a look at that in a second. In the meantime, I think Napalma should go here and create a nine-point hole for the monastery and gamble so that at the very least, yes, he does this excellent move, and then he should hope that he gets the monastery next, like the tile after, something like this. And then maybe, maybe he can do something in this game. But how exactly? So are there indeed tiles to finish the big city? Okay, so a triple city tile exists. There's one of those, and it goes over here. But are there two Doritos? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ah, there's only one Dorito remaining. And so he can put a triple city. Wait, how about this? Uh, triple city tile here at the top, Dorito here, and then city cap plus city cap. So we can try and finish it with. Um, with the top, like like this, but are there even two city caps remaining? Uh, are you good at tile counting, Zaharik? So, okay, Napalmai should go there, like add a city cap, and then really, really try to draw the unlikely combination of finishing his ruin. You know, with a uh, triple city, uh, he can place it in the on the, the center. Uh, then, uh, are there any Doritos? Okay, it's a monastery for Samuel. And... Yes, okay, yeah. so he gets the thing. So, okay, to... now he can place it, uh, the triple city, uh, in the, on the center of the city. Yes, yes, this works. Oh, not here. Uh, Okay, okay, here yeah, th this also, also works. works. I mean, it's blockable, of course, and yeah. Samuelson it should also... go block it now, but this also works. Yeah, uh, in the meantime, of course, it. Samuelson draws the monster with the road and was 13 points ahead, but most importantly, most importantly of all, we get another super thanks, two super thanks in one stream. Thank you so much, uh, Helge, who sent uh, 50 uh, Swedish crowns. I will make sure that I will buy myself a um, Kanelbull uh, to have with my Fika. Uh, with these uh, 50 Swedish crowns. Thank you so much for the super thanks. It is appreciated a lot. By the way, we have a really interesting results in other games. Um, Fanalex won his game, uh, Devaka won his game, <clears throat> and at the same time, Krishna uh, won his game. So we have one one in uh, most of the games. Alrighty. So we have mostly deciders. Oh, this is awesome. This is... Oh, and look at this. Napalm, I was so close. And he even he even calculated correctly. I mean, gotta give uh, massive respect for my teammate here for calculating, for, mm -hmm. for having the vision to finish the city. Because had Samuelson not drawn this tile, Napalm, I would have used the exactly correct city cap over here. So he knew that there was this dagger remaining, but not the other dagger remaining. And then uh, there would there would still there is a regular Dorito to put in this hole. So excellent wind path found by my teammate. But unfortunately, um, the Ukrainian was very precise, calculated calculated that such an opportunity to finish Blue City still exists, and just thwarted that completely. <laughs> Okay, we have also results in the second game. Uh, Nazario lost his second game versus Margots. So um, we have one, one in the main score in our game. All righty, congratulations to all this who managed to win a clean against Nazario. Again, also Nazario, very high rated for a new player for for the Ukraine, but nevertheless, Margots, who I think is in, in his mid 500s, managed to <laughs> defeat them. Well, Samuelson would have drawn the Dorito anyway, but at the very least, we, we would have kept the suspense to the end. And um, now he's attacking Napalmai City, but uh, Giannis was going to draw the extender, but now is unable to do so. Uh, still, have to give uh, them credit for 
trying to come back. Samuelson scores a six-point road, which is strong. And Napalmai gets another city cap, which would have fit over there, but doesn't. He is simply able to just make some blocking moves. And Samuelson continues his road. Napalmai gets a monastery tile and uh, discards it. And Samuelson gets the final dagger metaphorically and literally he has uh, a lot of choice how to get this extra one point who put, put this here decides to continue his road and we will see the final scores uh to helga thank you very much for the kind words it does uh indeed help quite a lot more than one might think Oh, Napamai is already here. That was quick. We are still refreshing uh, the scores. So don't tell us what the difference was. Yeah, it seems that the difference was only three points, but there's just this small detail, this enormous field. And I have to give credit for Anatoly here. Just excellent, uh, excellent shape and excellent field control in a position which looks excellent for the play with the blue meeples with these two early monasteries. Then Samuelson managed to get themselves a meeple advantage and put themselves in the position where all they have to do is just expand and expand the field. And blue uh, with his meeple shortage wasn't really too able, able to do that much. They tried to have a run for the city, which I think would have given blue the game, but a masterful... A uh, little one-point sacrifice block here by the Ukrainian sealed the deal in this game. So congratulations to Team Ukraine for one more match point. And I think we will now have to view one of the other deciders. So, uh, Sergey. Uh, I suggest to, uh, to open Divaka versus uh, Asedzus. Uh, there are uh, eight tiles remaining in this game. And really, really equal game. Alrighty. Devaka, a newer player, but already an expert. And Esedzus, much, much more uh, experienced in on the international scene. But they have been uh, out of um, practice uh, since they have been going on to other things. By the way, just so you know, like Esedzus is literally a magician. That's what he does for uh, a living. So you need to expect very wow. extravagant <laughs> moves uh, from him. <laughs> and they do have uh, an extra meeple to work with. They're losing six points, but <laughs> this is such an interesting map that I can barely zoom out to fit it all and so many fields so many fields six point farm for the vodka here nine point farm for latvin here six point farm for the for the vodka here and uh, then there's a nine point closed farm for this green guy and a six point closed farm for this green guy and there's a six point farm here for this green guy so does this mean that a is slightly ahead especially given that he has an extra monastery at the bottom and some meeples to play with i see that there are no curves remaining so maybe i said just can go over here and block this field mm -hmm. connection square i'm pretty sure that devaka is looking forward to draw something like a dorito but you know it's only uh it's only plus one city connection for the Vulcan. yes but it is a very but close still... game so like a three points could actually mm -hmm. make the difference yeah and no other good moves for this uh, straight road I think so, yeah. Well, I mean, he could just get one point for the monastery. But he decides to bl make a block mm -hmm. move, and I really, really like it. Dvaka now gets a quick point tile, which is okay, excellent points, for him to points, points. Mm -hmm. Just with one people, it's a good tile for him. Just like two points anywhere. And he chooses the beautiful spot at the middle. So plus eight on the scoreboard for the Ukrainian. 
and he still have has one uh, open city in his uh, top field and I assume that there are still some city caps left I think there's one vanilla city cap remaining which may tempt us actually as edges do we just go over here no he decides to take two quick ones but because i think if if whoever draws the vanilla cap i think wins the game because look at this there's this huge yeah, field here so whoever huge, goes here huge, huge field. drops a farmer mm -hmm. for 12 points and there's nothing either side can do i think all it is is just like a coin flip for the game oh my god what is he doing oh why he oh, he's not playing wow. the city he, he took two points instead of seven he could have completed a seven. A what is he city. doing? Oh my god! A little, a massive, massive hallucination here. And Sajus is the first one to win the coin flip. Gets a six point, a nine point mm -hmm. field, which is huge. Nine Surely point will fields. give the Latvian the game. Mm. Has to go over here to prevent Edges from getting another, uh, so getting some city points. Okay, there's still one vanilla city cup. So I hope that Divaka. Here. I mean, Divaka will notice, but Edges can neutralize it right now. Instead of taking a four point ruin, what Edges mm -hmm. should do, he should go here and take a two point city just so that Divaka doesn't have a seven point move himself. It's an important calculation that the Latvian needs to realize. Because look at this. So let's say if S. Edges. If uh, just uh, takes the highest point scoring, oh, it's just a six point field. This is way better, obviously. Six point six field, point field yeah. seven point uh, city for Devaka. So ultimately, uh, only f only two lost points for Devaka because he took uh, advantage from the city cap anyway. Um, I don't think these two points would have made a difference because it was really all about who was going to draw the access to this nine point field and the magician is saying wow probably signifying that he managed to pull this off let's just um see what the final score is i will zoom a little bit out so that you can see what the players wait as Sejus is saying, I was sure that I was going to win. So I was sure of that too. But is Edges not winning? How is that possible? Is that a tie? Because he's saying, what do we do now? It's a tie. <laughs> so who was last? Divaka was last, so as Sejus is winning. Uh, the last move was for Divaka, and he uh, plays uh, it in the for seven point move with the uh, uh, regular regular uh, vanilla city cup so this means that tie is a win for second player yep yes and it's exactly a so so i said just wins anyway so this means that the mistake that we're talking about was the decisive mistake all that Devaka needed to do was just was just not hallucinate and take the regular move with this city cap yep and then he would have taken the seven points for the city cap with a different city cap. And then on the last move, when Red drew the other city cap, Red could have just placed it anywhere, for example, over here for a uh, four point yeah. city. So, uh, well, we're back. Blunder season is starting. And the first, the, the biggest blunder of the Carcassonne World Cup preseason, we have witnessed it right now, brought to you by Team Ukraine. Thank you so much, Devaka, for this wonderful, wonderful content. Uh, I so many times ask my uh, teammates not to do fast moves, especially when you have enough time to think, and especially when uh, it's really, really close game and you need to analyze uh, some moments. But... I am not sure that... Uh, I'm sure that Divac um, uh, didn't have uh, time pressure and he can uh, <clears throat> take some time to find this move. Okay, it is quite easy, I really then. like to to see the Krishna and Tanya's game. Already, already opened it right now. So this yeah. is another decider. <laughs> and uh, well, Tanya has put the currently 
world number one rated player to no longer world number one rated player as her first win put uh, Krish Kaut is under 800 rating, which I'm pretty sure he'll get back in due course, but maybe not in this game because the Ukrainian player with the yellow meeples, by the way, properly chosen meeple color to match the colors of the flag. I hope that her secondary meeple color is blue. Um, she's ahead 12 points on the scoreboard and she has three extra meeple. And the question is, does her opponent have anything to compensate for the difference well he does have this road which is about to get completed with one of the two remaining curves i think actually so it's uh it's it's, yeah, it's two remaining curves yeah so it's gonna take a while before christian even draws this and it's not even a given that he draws this at all there's this eight point monastery the six point monastery this slightly better developed ruin in comparison to yellow's ruin so red is winning in this mini battle but yellow has a bunch of fields a six point field over here six point field over here these are 12 extra points so that's not nothing and red has a meeple shortage because of this blocked road for a measly two points so i am liking tanya's position more uh, what do you think, Sergey? I think it's uh, mostly the equal in the scoring board, uh, in the um, total score. But I think the um, uh, uh, if uh, Krishna will manage to find this regular curve uh, fast. I think uh, he will have a huge advantage because of this move. And then with uh, three maples in the hand, um, I think Fatania will be really hard to win this game. But uh, let's see how, uh, if he will manage to find this regular curve and how fast he can do that. Uh, so Illusionist Edris is adding if Tanya used time is over. I think it's just like a, a weird thing with Board Game Arena. I don't think she went over time. I think it was actually Krishna who was thinking because look at this update. So I know it was showing like minus 30 seconds for Tanya, uh, but I don't think that was the case because it's it's Krishna who has 30 seconds. So he was the one thinking it. So, uh, um, yeah, I wouldn't really worry about that. Speaking of which, actually... Uh, how did we discuss uh, the rules, Sergey? So, in case of loss on time, is that considered mm -hmm. a loss, just like in a world championship? I think yes, because uh, players need to understand uh, um, need to understand that in uh, in a real game, in uh, World Cup, uh, they will lose the games, uh, and uh, they need to be prepared to lose when they lose the time so i think it's it's the right approach even in the friend the matches well speaking of the right approach i think this is exactly what tanya does after krishna placed his last meeple to start a new city cap she decided to add yep. one point <laughs> to a krishna just to make it much harder for him to finish the city because he will now need not one city cap but two city caps and the second thing that Tanya is doing right, she's drawing tiles that Krish needs. And Krish really needed this curve to get a meeple back, two meeples back actually, and three extra points. But Tanya drew it because she knew. But unfortunately, Tanya does not have quite the skills and experience to draw the second curve. And it is a Krishna who manages to get two of his meeples back with the last remaining curve in the deck. And now currently Krishna is four points ahead on the scoreboard with an extra monastery, with an extra city piece over here. Tanya, meeples, another five points monastery. Oh my god, oh my god, a splitter. A splitter, a splitter for Krishna, it's, it's really, really for Krishna nice. Because oh. you can go over here, get a six point city and get a six point farm as well. And separating his from Tanya's city. And he's thinking, but I'm pretty sure this is the move. And I think this is what will give the Latvian player a significant advantage. Make it much harder for the Ukrainian player to win. How did that turn around so quickly, Sergey? Yeah, it's all about this uh, regular curve, and with two extra meeples, uh, Krishna can 
can really win this game. Uh, when um, I suggested to open this ma uh, match, I was hoping that Tanya has a really, really huge advantage in, in this game. He managed to close this big city in the center. Uh, oh, so that was all Tanya's? This was all Tanya's? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is very, very interesting. And now Tanya is making an excellent move. She's trying now to take over that farm. She's dropping a, a three-point farmer, hoping to draw a straight line to go over here and then unify all these farms, achieving a two meeple versus one meeple majority. All these farms will merge. They have three completed cities on them, and this will be just nine points directly to Tanya. This, I'm not sure that's going to be enough, but it's definitely a great effort. In the meantime, thank you, Ramzes, for the very kind words and support to Team Latvia. This is exactly what we need, even in, even in a favorable situation like this. Ah, and Tanya and Helgi saying Tanya could have prevented the red divider farmer with a curve. So uh, Helgi is saying that had Tanya placed this curve over here then it would have made sure that Krishna would not have been able to drop a farmer with tempo. That the city would actually have yeah. been on a yellow's field. So great mm -hmm. point there, Helge. But instead, of course, Tiny was trying to uh, harass this city, but it might have been a qu uh, quest an issue of questionable prioritization. Well, Krishna now with a Dorito tile, might add two points here, might add two points here, or might add two points here and try to protect this ruin from invasion. Actually, this ruin happens to be the highest scoring feature on the board at the moment with nine points, but instead Krishna decides to continue his city and the top, maybe calculating that it's still possible to finish it. Uh, Tanya draws a straight line, and I'm pretty sure she's gonna go over here. She achieves her plan of having a mm -hmm. nine-point field, but a devastating blow as Krishna draws a fantastic tile, which Tanya could have used over here for qu quick for, for quick points. But instead, it is Krishna who is going to use this tile over here for either for quick points or maybe over here for seven points. We get news from another table, as actually gets news in the chat from uh, Maris, that's only Denver, that he lost the divider. So. Uh, the, deci the decider, so it is Fan Alex N, who won, uh, and it's currently 3 2 for the uh, in favor of Ukraine. So basically, this is a game. If Krishna wins this, then we tie the match. So it's either uh, if Tanya wins, then Ukraine wins for 4 versus 2, and if Krishna wins, then it says three versus three and complete the completely equal. So, uh, you know, I, I'm trying to find some ways for Tanya to win this um, game. And I am really not sure that there are some options for that. Maybe only if uh, she managed to close the ruin on the right top. Mm with two uh, small cities. That is possible. The question is, do these city tiles there is There is still one uh, monster with the rod in the game. Oh, okay, so this would allow her to take some quick points over here, but instead he, she okay. scores some Four quick points. points with something else. I think it's a, very, it's a fantastic tile for Tanya. And he might mm -hmm. go over here. She might go over here. And Krish will have only one and a half minutes to figure out everything. So at least we know that Tanya will not be finishing this city because there's simply not enough tile remaining. But given yep. that there's still a road monastery remaining, um, well, a lot of things could happen with that road monastery. So, for example, if Krish gets it, it's probably an instant win because it's like a six-point monastery over here plus an extra monastery point. Mm -hmm. That's a seven-point move. But if Tanya gets the monastery, especially if it's on the last tile, who knows? Maybe that's actually enough for her to get back into the game. 47 points, minus six points for the new uh, Ukrainian. Krish gets a city cap, and now he will need to decide. He will need to count everything. Does he need... Anything in particular? Oh, and it's a great yeah. move by yeah. Krishna. There is one steel. Mm -hmm. There is one steel city cup. 
this oh, yeah. move guaranteed Krishna the win because either Krishna was going to draw this city cap which Tanya just drew or he was going to draw the road monastery which he now has in hand as we know so this this set up two powerful tiles and it didn't matter whether Krishna was going to draw the tile that completed the city or whether Krishna's goal was going to draw the uh, road monastery that was a win guaranteed and I think this Dorito move was earlier was absolutely brilliant by the Latvian because he recognized that there was still a sequence of tiles that allowed him to finish the city in the future or at least to create the threat of finishing the city and that's how he knew road monastery for the Latvian is going to go over here score seven points and win this duel which I think will completely tie this match. Uh, you know, I remember our previous uh, friendly game, and this time we played much, much better. Because last time we lost something like uh, 1 to 5, or even 0 to 5, something like that. Wasn't it the opposite? I so, think that in our friendly game, in the preseason, as I remember this last year, it was yeah, actually yeah, it's, Ukraine it's who won 5 0. But then Latvia won in the actual World Cup 4 versus 1. I think it was the preseason um, before the Euro tournament. Let me check it. I think I have these results on my website. So. Yeah, so uh, before. Before the Euro tournament, we lost the friendly match one to five. Ah, so <laughs> wow. I yeah. didn't. I, th that somehow was not what I have in my memory. Maybe we're talking about different years, but I definitely remember suffering a, a heavy loss to Ukraine in a preseason match. Maybe that was a different year. Um, well, anyway, I thought that we witnessed high level Carcassonne from both sides some mistakes and blunders from both sides so we both have our jobs as captains yet still to do but look at this a complete tie so 3-3 Latvia versus Ukraine and also the number of games so Latvia won 10 games and Ukraine also won 10 games so the tiebreaker is complete as well <laughs> the friendliest possible outcome for the friendliest possible match and we get another super thanks thank you so much kk spam this makes me uh very happy kk spam is saying great match very nice games and engaging content thanks for commentary and analytics sergey and uh, alexei much much appreciated for the uh support kk spam Whew. Well, we still have eight minutes before the next match. Uh, what are your impressions of uh, this match, Sergey? Are you happy with the outcome? You have to answer yes, but you also can expand your answer. Uh, you know, I am um, really glad, glad that uh, Fun Alex is in a good shape. Um, he um, uh, he he's playing. Uh, um, Ukrainian online championship in the second league and um, not the amazing results um, for him in the second league in our uh, local online championship. But I know that uh, Fan Alex, one of the strongest player in our team, even that he um, he has uh, not been playing for some time, but uh, in such a uh, matches uh, really uh, stressful matches against some really complicated uh, opponents he he usually um, shows some amazing results for example in the previous um, euro tournament he won all his uh, three duels against uh, his opponents even that uh, he um, hasn't had so many uh, games before and um, not so good practice, but still um, he really <clears throat> he really likes games like that against um, complicated uh, opponents in such stressful moments. And I can't say the same for uh, our newcomers. 
uh, I see that uh, they are really stressful and he can play uh, much, much better. For example, Nazario uh, uh, is showing really great results in our local competition. But um, in the first uh, friendly match, there were so many mistakes from his side, uh, but I can understand that because he um, he was playing the first time for our Ukrainian team and he needs some uh, games to play uh, before he can play in his real uh, strength. Uh, so, uh, does the outcome and, and the performance of today's match uh, will that influence whom you're going to line up for uh, different games uh, at the actual championship? Uh, you know, um, for uh, World Cup, we can have only ten players in our in our team, and I really. Uh, uh, Sad, feel sad about that because we have uh, much. We have um, so many strong players that I wanted to play in Ukrainian team, and now we need to decide uh, um, who will uh, be playing uh, for Ukraine. Currently, uh, I'm decide. I, I I have decided about nine players that will um, uh, participate in this World Cup. And we have only one spot for three players, and uh, we will vote uh, in the team uh, after the all uh, friendly matches, after some uh, tournament, after some training tournaments, after um, after the arena season. Uh, we can see um, the results of these three players, and we can decide who uh, who will take this final spot in the Ukrainian team. Alrighty, well, we'll be watching that. I mean, whoever that is, uh, Ukraine will, as we see, will bring an amazingly strong team again. So I hope at least this time, at least this time, Latvia doesn't get to play with Ukraine in the same group as we uh, very often do. Like, we want a little bit. Uh, we don't want to get stressed out so much although ultimately we hope that we get to meet in in some form in, in the finals of course <laughs> in the finals yeah no we have so so bad uh, relationships with the world cup um our best result was uh one one time we uh, managed to um, to, uh, to move to the playoffs and um, all other uh, our attempts, we uh, haven't managed to uh, to win the group, <clears throat> so we uh, were losing on the group stage. And uh, we were joking that our competition is a Euro tournament where we uh, place third uh, place, then second place, then again third place. Uh, but uh, World Cup. It's not our um, tournament for now, but I hope this year we uh, finally can do that and show some good results. I believe you can. I believe Ukraine is absolutely like one of the contenders, uh, e e e e even even for the title. So certainly one of the ones to watch. But um, well, enough about Ukraine and enough about Latvia. In two minutes, Spain against Catalonia, principal rivalry, two teams who have played against each other a lot. Um, these are going to start, and I have updated the scoreboard to see the new players. So some new cameras on both sides. 2020 Rafa, that's the reigning Spain champion in in-person Carcassonne, and P Capella for Catalonia. So I need to get myself some hot liquid to stay rehydrated. Uh, and in the meantime, Sergey, can you talk to my viewers if you know about any of these players and what you think about them? And I will run away and I will join you in two minutes. Yeah, yeah, sure. Oof. <clears throat> I know um, Karkin Yolis because uh, she was playing in the Champions League. 
And uh, I think uh, not so many players from this list I know well. Uh, with uh, Matt, uh, Matt Ken, uh we were playing uh, uh, we were playing in some of the championships, maybe in the Euro tournament or in the World Cup. Uh, we have been playing with uh, Spain team a couple of times uh, on the big competitions. Uh, also, Oscar Ridis. Um, if I'm not mistaken, um, I was playing with him on the last Euro, ter- Euro tournament in our group stage, and I uh, I have lost this game against Oscar Ridis. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, he won the um, the local tournament in Spain this year. Let me check it uh, on the Carcassonne GG site. There is some information about that. Yeah, uh, Oscar Ides won um, uh, the Liga, uh, Liga Carcassonne Spain online this year. That was um, completed in, uh, in February or in March this year. Mm, and a lot of new names here in this list uh, on the Catalonia team, on the Spain team. I'm not sure that I uh, I remember them in our previous games with these teams. I'm back, Hi, back, back, and I've smashed so many things on the way. I stalled everything that you said. And, uh, oh, hi, Nalheim. And we are going to start the game. Who do you want to watch? I suggest that we watch one of the newcomers, either 2020 Raffer or P. Capella. What does your intuition tell you, Sergey? Uh, I will prefer to, uh, to watch for the newcomers. It's really interesting to see um, these players, the, the level of their game. Uh, which one? 2020 By the way, or P. Capella? I, I, uh, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I can um, help you with the stream just for some uh, time, and then I have to go. Oh, sure. I have some family stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. How how about the the last game? Great. I really don't remember uh, both of these players. Oh, so the last one. Okay, so they have already started, and Visitor Q, I think, had, t- had taken a break, but they, uh, I would say, probably the most experienced player on the team. They were even there on the first mm-hmm. time this tournament had ever happened. And, well, this is an interesting start with two super vulnerable cities, uh, both players. Are we going to witness a close position? It's uh, something that I don't see a lot with Iberian players. So, again, I'm going to step out. I've opened the game, and Sergey, please analyze the position as Visitor Q takes the monastery. Oof. Yeah, I would play the same, I think, with this monastery. Uh, it's at the beginning of the game, and uh, this position is not so great, but still, even if this monastery will be blocked, it will uh, gain four yellow uh, seven or eight points. And I do not agree with yellow not to meeple the second monastery. It, uh, it's so really nice, uh, two monasteries um, sitting behind. <clears throat> I think that these two potential monasteries will be closing really, really soon. So I do not agree not to, be, not to meeple it. Okay, uh, with this uh, triple city, I think the, um, uh, the gr- good option for it will be to to play this uh, triple city, uh, but not uh, not like that. I prefer to place the city on the top, field uh, to the bottom. 
and then maybe try to connect to this big ruin, but I'm not sure it uh, it's uh, if this ruin will increase, then maybe it will be a reason to connect to it. Okay, Alexei, we need you because uh, we can see uh, the whole picture. Thank you so much, Turkey, for stepping in. Already, <laughs> uh, so we had a bit of a <laughs> we radio can see broadcast. Only, uh... oh. <laughs> uh, I heard what you're saying. I agree with your analysis. Uh, but although, wait, why don't we see a monastery meeple next to here? What is that about? What is that chicken out from monasteries? Uh, yeah, yeah. It. Uh, I think it was a mistake. Uh, this monastery need to be mapled. <laughs> Yes, emergency commentating. This is exactly what it is. Oh, thank you so much for stepping in, Sergey. So, um, well, yeah, it's a complicated position. Both players are equal on the scoreboard. So Rafa is now trying to attack the city of Visitor Q at the top. And Rafa has a monastery. Visitor Q has a monastery. And in the meantime, Kino in the chat is saying that Oscaritis won the, the Spanish uh, championship twice in 2021 and 2022. And uh, mm -hmm. yes, of course, 2020 Raffer, the current uh, champion in live Carcassonne in Spain and uh, other players, Matt Ken and Sexy One, had high results in national championships as well. And uh, Locuelo, who's, who's also has been on team for a couple of years, they happen to be one of the main organizers of the Carcassonne Spanish uh, online league called La Liga. And I think they have a lot of players. So in Ukraine, you have two divisions. In Spain, I think they might have three. Uh, now we have three divisions with 10 players in each. And uh, in Spain, they uh, ha have four divisions and with 20 players in each, if I'm not mistaken. So um, the uh, Carcassonne community in Spain just uh, so, so huge. It appears so. But in the meantime, the game is progressing quite slow. At least finally, Visitor Q mustered the courage to meeple a second monastery. And they've also developing their city, and they are now one tile away from completing the monastery. I was going to say that I like yellow, but now I increasingly like red in this position. As Visitor is about to finish an 8-point city on the right, is threatening a city on the left, trying to complete monasteries. Red is still struggling with this road over here, however it has absolutely the potential of having a curve, straight line, curve and becoming a long road over here it's a matter of spatial vision for rafa like does he see this threat but before that visitor q can do a bunch of interesting things so he's probably thinking of going over here scoring two points and uh, harassing this meeple a little bit disrupting the idea of red building a six point circular road at the top he might also want to finish his monastery straight away but i don't think there's a particular rush with that Another strong equity move is going over in here, and I really disagree with this move. I think there's no reason to rush at all, especially as Visitor Q is creating an opportunity for Red to draw, for example, a triple city tile over here and score three points and at the same time disrupting Yellow City. So I do think it's actually quite a significant um mistake it's it's just inefficiency yeah so you see this tile could have been used to score quick points here or here and then visitor q could have finished uh this monastery with this tile but the bright side for 
uh, the Catalan players that maybe they can use this road for something else. For example, for the thing that I was talking about. So they now disrupt the road of red at the top, but with two points fewer. And Rafa now manages to escape with a four-point city and start another city at the bottom. As a result, a six-point field has been created in the center, and Visitor Q probably should meeple it, and this is exactly what he does. Rafa gets a divider, probably going to go over here, probably going to meeple a farber, and now we will have a good um, romance field fight. Just proper open carcass on. It started out as closed, but as more city caps are being drawn, fireworks are about to start. Uh, we see the farmer as predicted. Visitor Q finishes an eight point city. Rafa gets a quick point tile as well. Probably going to score four points over here. And now Haim is saying, honestly would have liked Yellow taking the three point road next to their monastery instead of disrupting uh, red road at the top. Oh yeah, with this tile for sure. So this one would make sense, equalizing Rafa's road. Um, or actually with this tile, I think um, they could have gone and disrupting Rafa's city. So many uses for these road tiles. And this is, um, of course, a very, very uh, tricky part of Carcassonne, how to play with these tiles with which you need to use in multiple places, how to prioritize. Visitor Q, by the way, can still make the move that you and Alaham suggest, maybe, maybe by going over here, uh, having three points over here, or they could go over here, start a new road, or they could go over here, continue the monastery, which is exactly what they do, or they could have gone over here and dropped a farmer, which they don't do, maybe they're waiting it later. G nice move for Rafa trying to disrupt Red's monastery, but I'm pretty sure that Red will, oh, that yellow, of course, will go over here, add a monastery point, and make it so that it is not impossible to finish the monastery. There's still one and one tile only that's left to finish into the square, but Rafa's now managing to complete this road. And see what I was talking early, earlier about this long road idea? It is still alive and will give red a boatload of point in, if successful in the meantime visitor q scores four or three four or three three points uh on the left further disrupting rafa's road so maybe the plan of yellow is to draw for example the exact kind of tile that rafa just drew to go over here and make it much much harder for red to complete this road but it is not happening just yet as visitor q draws a quick point tile scores two points for the road and brings his city one point closer to completion if only he manages to draw a city cap then he'll be able to um get 10 points on the scoreboard and drop a farmer and rafa now facing a difficult decision he needs to either finish his road at the top or get a meeple back or do this which i agree with take three points for the road just to prevent the idea of visitor q finishing the city a drop or a farmer but at what cost visitor q managed to use the extra time to complete his plan to get the annoying city tile and and stick it into rafa's road so now rafa in order to get his meeple out will need to get a dagger tile a valuable dagger tile and then some sort of road end tile but the road end tiles are in short supply as uh rafa draws another road end tile but not quite the one that he needs at the moment and probably he can go over here take two points and just continue attacking the city maybe he'll be able to block visitor q city successfully or maybe he's thinking of completing this monastery at the top but instead he chooses to equalize the city and he's a savant because visitor q was about to finish that city and instead he can't he's finishing the city at uh, on the right and rafa now connects the farmers so this farm is now worth 12 points for both of these players visitor q now has a bunch of strong moves either three quick points over here for the road or he might just go over here try to attack the city maybe try to get a majority on the city or he might go over here at the bottom and already drop a farmer and trying to get a straight line to get a majority on this field to play with his meeple advantage so uh sergey which of these moves would you prefer or i think sergey might have to leave already uh, uh no sorry Alexei. i'm i'm here but <clears throat> i need to go outside with my dog 
Oh. He's really, really asking me about that. <laughs> oh, got it, got it, got it. Uh, yeah, well, uh, this is the best excuse ever. Uh, well, anyway, thank you so much for Sergey for joining. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you, Alexei, for inviting me for this game. <clears throat> we have really um, good material with our team to analyze uh, our um, friendly match. Uh, also, thanks for Otto to do um, uh, a stream at the same time um, for our game Ukraine Latvia. Uh, so we can also analyze his uh, comments about our game. So, thanks, you guys. See you. Yeah, Vika is wishing you a good walk in the chat. Goodbye, Sergey. Thank you so much for joining. We will uh, discuss everything later. Bye, Sergey. Bye, bye. And Sergey left at the most interesting moment. So let me just uh, get the images away. Lower the desktop sounds so that you get fewer sounds. So, uh, Sergey missed an interesting thing, a gigantic city, gigantic city. Okay, so as Visitor Q was attacking this shared city with a second meeple, he managed to draw a tile just in time to connect, and he also draw a six-point farmer, and he can even, he can even still get a starting tile to equalize all these farms, but it is not enough. I mean, that person is just so ruthless, merciless. He, it does not, it is not enough for him that he's like 27 points ahead on the scoreboard, and has an eight-point minus tree. He decided that he wants to win the field as well. So he's dropping a farmer, trying to get a straight line or some sort of curve, trying to connect into the field and then um, win the game with an even <laughs> bigger difference. I mean, these Iberian games are always like high scoring, fireworks, huge cities, huge fields, like five farmers, all that kind of good stuff. It's no these, you know, I add one, mo one point to my ruin, then I like, Block you with five tiles. No, it's it's bam, 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 all the way. You see, we have more farmers. Visitor, six point minus tree. Rafa, three point farmer, which will eventually equalize this farm. And now that the Spaniard has uh, the meeple advantage, maybe he's, he can also start thinking about not only connecting this meeple, but also using this little piece as a field connection platform. So let's say if uh, Rafa is going to draw something like this. Okay, not yet. He continues his city on the right. But if he draws another city tile, he might go over here, drop a farmer, get a row tile, and then when he connects through here, he'll get not one but two extra meeples on the field, and he'll have a majority on this farm, which will bring him like 18 points. So that is not nothing. This actually might indicate that the play with the red meeples is still alive, so he does connect to the field, but what will happen later? Visitor gets all oh, gets the magic tile that goes over here in this square, but will he use it? It will give him the majority on the field, so sounds like he should use it, but it also open up the field immensely. Honestly, I think he actually he shouldn't use it. Like I think the correct move is no, no, no. The the correct move is actually to go over here and drop the last farmer and have a closed field. So, very wise choice here by Visitor, just recognizing that he's so far ahead, he doesn't need to create big features, because even though, even if he were to go over here and temporarily have a majority on this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 27 point farm, because Rafa would have the meeple advantage, Rafa would have been able to go over here, and then maybe go over here, and actually get two farmers into the field and as a result win the game. So Visitor is making sure that even if Rafa somehow manages to sneak in another farmer into the field, it is still the Catalan player which will, uh, who will prevail overall simply because of the scoreboard lead and a reminder that the scoreboard lead is due to this gigantic city completed by the Catalan player. <sighs> you know what I like? I like that both players are using... Um, Meeple colors that match the colors on the national flag. I have a, 
a little thing about that. Visitor. Well, surely now it's a farmer move. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, don't be greedy with four points. Be technical. This is a tile which, which of course, Raph was looking forward to draw. But it is the Catalan player who gets yet another farmer and now will probably connect either through here or through here. And we will see a complete destruction in this game. Nothing like the tight matches that we saw Latvia versus Ukraine. No, it's going to be like plus 50 for the play with the yellow meeple. Plus 50 and no shame and no regrets. Rafa scores a six-point field on the right. Visitor doesn't quite get a good tile. Nothing much they can do about that. I guess they can just add one road point to themselves near the monastery in a variety of different ways. Or they can actually even go over here and maybe even meeple this road just for kicks trying to get a curve and not only a field connection but also a six point road like this or they might simply pre-build this road and go over here without a meeple choices are endless mm. speaking of meeples place one on the like button it helps with the algorithm quite a lot no seriously like after i cross the thousand subscriber threshold thanks to y'all so much for that um the number of new viewers started increasing significantly. So I haven't uh, yet had the time to fully prepare and announce the 1000 subscriber giveaway, which is absolutely happening in April. Uh, as I've got like 40 more subscribers. So there is really a lot of increased interest in competitive Carcassonne. Um, visitor did not get a curvy tile because maybe there wasn't one in existence still that was a very strong move and now they did add one point to their monastery and now they took five points for the road so it will be of course a big win for the spaniard maybe not quite the big win as we were expecting there's still one tile remaining in the deck i'm not quite sure what it is uh we know that uh, red's highest scoring move is actually using this monastery as a farming tile well you can go over here and take a six point field or a six point monastery for that matter depending on your aesthetics i um think that uh granjeros is the choice of most spanish players aesthetically such a beautiful word granjero that means farmer Hi, Alfonso. One minute and 35 seconds remaining. Oh, oh. So Visitor is saying that it was a good game and then they had uh, luck with the big city, but we're having some rain. <laughs> uh... So are we getting some disruption? I don't think that we are. I think we're good. Yeah, so a monastery instead of the field goes to Rafa. Well played, Rafa is saying in the chat. I have to agree with them. I mean, Visitor Q, they did get good tiles, but the point is that they created a lot of threats. They had, like, Monastery here, Monastery there, cities in different sides, and... Uh... Alrighty. <laughs> Alema94 is saying... Wait, wait. Shall we, ha shall we have a look at Texas game? Mm, recuperare il seguidor de... Uh, okay, what is Tentador? Uh, something, something. There was maybe tenta temptation to uh, recuperate the meeple from the monastery. I'm not sure which uh, moment they're talking about. They're saying that the city was decisive and that it is Rafa's mistake. But I don't think it was a mistake. I don't think Rafa could have attacked the city really. Oh no, but it actually was! Because I think Rafa was the one who created this attacking platform. So it was Rafa who went over here 
and then vi and then visitor used the attacking platform created by Rafa by placing a tile over here and then on the next move of course visitor drew this leading to a uh, 132 versus 100 win imagine scoring 100 points and Ooh, and uh, losing a game. This is what Iberian Carcassonne is like. Okay. Now somebody chat and somebody in the chat helped me. How are other jewels going? I want to have a look at Oscaridis versus P Capella. So just we have, just so that we um, have uh, a look at one of the newcomers. I know it. Oscaridis is an ex ex exceptionally fast player, and they have now already won their first uh, game against the Catalan newcomer. And they are now in the middle of their second game. They have it started five minutes ago, which means that it's probably approaching its end. And of course, in five minutes, these players have already managed to make like 30 moves, which is exactly what they're like. So both rated in the mid 400, so an equally uh, matched um, Pairing. Nalaheim, thank you for confirming that Locoello one two zero against Borborici. So Spain is on the match scoreboard. Well, Locoello, the more experienced player. So no major surprises there. It is the Catalan newcomer who is currently headed with six points on the scoreboard. Make it eight, the Catalan is saying as his tally is approaching 30. Both players have only one meeple in hand. As many meeples have already been deployed, Oscaridis has this eight point monastery in the middle and it is waiting for one of the three remaining vanilla city caps to go over here. Four points for the vanilla city caps, nine points for the monastery. So a big setup here for Oscaridis wait waiting to happen. In the meantime, there is a juicy 15 point field in the middle, but this is currently tied between these two red meeples and these two blue meeples. So everything ends up canceling out. Oscar Riddis gets a six point monastery, which could have gone over here as well. But I really like this monastery pattern with two rodents sticking out of it because the ultimate plan for uh, somebody who puts this monastery like this is not only to get the nine monastery point, but to get a straight line, straight line, curve and get a five point row to go along with it. So Oscar Riddis is really making quite a threat there. He's also trying to build up his city on the right, which is still live, while P. Capella's city is actually uh, already blocked with only five points. And P. Capella chooses, chose greed and take four points and he will not manage to attack the city by Oscar Edis, as Oscar Edis covers it up and he's now one tile away from finishing the city completely and getting like 16 points for it. So maybe it's a bit of an oversight for, for P. Capella. Maybe he should have attacked the city or maybe they decided that they're so far ahead on the scoreboard with 13 extra points that they can actually afford to allow Oscaridis to complete the city. I'm not sure which logic exactly they were following, but now they need to make a choice. Do they go over here, meeple the city and try to chase after it? Or do they just say, you know what? I don't care about the city. I just want to get compensation in other forms. They can go over here and meeple the city cap and create a counter threat of their own. I would have gone for the other approach. So Oscaridis can now continue the city on their own. P. Capella probably going to go over here and block it, or they might just... Yeah, this is exactly what P. Capella does. They really, really hope that Oscaridis does not draw something like this. And look at this, just in time, the Catalan blocks the Spaniard city, and Oscaridis is not able to put the game away, but instead he just uses his last meeple to farm exceptionally prematurely. I think it's a mistake here by the Spanish player. This will make him lose quite a bit of point value. But um, let's see, maybe that somehow plays out. P. Capella decides to unify two cities instead of going over here and trying to fight for Oscar Ridis' city. So I'm not sure about P. Capella's reluctance to try and fight for the city. Maybe he knows something about the tile runner that I don't. I know for a fact that there does exist at least one tile, at least this one, that can make blue finish his city so p capella needs to worry about it and needs to worry about it bad in the meantime thank you for confirming now that 
Taxi One uh, and Carquinoles are leading 1-0 in, uh, in their respective games. Carquinhol is in good shape for Catalonia. That's why I put them bold. They're uh, the ones to watch. Catalonia, uh, Casamola was more experienced than Taxi, I think, in these international tournaments. So that's certainly a um, nice a win uh, for Team Spain, as Team Spain is currently a little bit ahead. They, uh, as I will need to remind you, they're currently were not the last game, they, uh, last year they came fourth in the World Cup, so a very, very strong team. Uh, hi, uh, Daniel. But back to this game, because I think they're playing so, so, so fast. So, nothing substantial has changed, as Picapel gets an extra point, and now Picapel is trying to block the monastery, but too late, as Oscar Rides gets a starting tall, gets 18 points uh, for the city, gets a meeple back, 5 points extra for the scoreboard, and a commanding lead, and I think Oscar Rides is about to put this one away. He also managed to successfully connect to the farm, so this early gamble paid off, but at the very least, Picapel still has some field entry points. He might go over here if he's feeling particularly lucky, drop a farmer like this and connect through a straight line like this into the field, or he might wait until he gets a city tile and then go over here, drop a farmer like this and then connect here. This would be a bit more of a classical connection. But if you ask me, I think first Picapel needs to take care of recuperating meeples. There are two places how he can do so. He can draw a couple of city tiles and get a meeple from here, or they can go over here, over here, over here, trying to finish their monastery. The latter route seems to be more productive to me, but they are making it interesting and I like it. They are hoping to draw the one remaining road monastery tile and to put it over here. This is an interesting farming approach. Let's see if it brings us somewhere. Picapella, four, four extra quick points on the scoreboard, just one point away from Oscaridis, indirectly continuing their city. Oscaridis gets the needed vanilla tile and finishes his monastery, scores extra four points for the city and uh, unifies all the fields. Currently, blue has the majority over here. In order to win, Picapella will need to get... Some sort of field connection platform, but how exactly do they do that? They need meeples first. They cannot afford to just drop their last meeple somewhere um, and try to connect. I'm not exactly sure how they do that. Maybe the path is to go here and just hope to draw. Yeah, actually, why not? We go here, place this guy like with a city cap to the left. Then we hope to build efficiently. We hope to get a dagger tile. So we go over here, gain four points. Then we take this, we go over here, take three points for the road and nine points for the monastery. And then we have a meeple back. Then we take a road tile over here. Then we get a monastery, then we score nine points. Then we get a crossroad tile, place it over here, place a farmer like this, get a curve, get four points for the road and connect a hypothetical farmer through the outside of the curve into the field, equalize the field and win the game because of the completed features. All doable. So this requires immense amount of help from the tile stack, but it is doable. So my dear Catalan fans, do not lose hope. Not there, if you ask me. Picapella does not my, like my idea. I think they have an idea of their own. Well, they can take the three points that I was talking about earlier. Oscar Reed is starting a ring road at the top near his monastery. At the same time, getting one extra monastery point. I like that move. Picapella indeed taking the three points. Ah, uh, Oscar it is, is dropping a three point farmer, which I think is extra, but it actually has a point. I think his plan is to draw the monastery tile 
and place it over here. Score two points for the road and then bring extra insurance to this farm, which is why Picabella denies that opportunity by taking two points himself. And now it is actually not to get, it is not possible to get this farmer into the main field through traditional means. By the way, had Picapella listened to me, this tile could have been used over here, together with this tile, together with this tile like this. He would have had four points for the city, nine points for the monastery, but instead, because they didn't listen to me, this didn't happen. Okay. <laughs> now I'm saying next level physics teacher doing what he does. Uh, explaining the situation 15 tiles ahead of the current situation. Well, this is what I have to do, right? I have to come up with some sort of plans um, for the Catalan player to win the game because they're... I mean, you have to keep fighting. And, and also, like, imagining the situation 15 tiles ahead, this is a important part of the game. Imagination is important in general. Well, Pika Pella did, show, did take four points, just not in the place which was most advantageous for them. So they are still having only one meeple to play with. Still possible to do something with that one meeple, but Oscar Ridd is just being... <laughs> just being... extra cautious, shall we say, or extra blatant with his approach. So he recognizes that this field is so big that if he secures a super majority on this field, there is nothing that Picapella will be able to do. And his plan is to draw a curve and put yet a four farmer into this main field, making sure that Picapella is mathematically unable to do anything about this. And the reason why Oscaridis is able to do this is the fact that all of the eight crossroads that could have been used over here to block this connection has have gone out. So this is excellent recognition on the part of the Spaniard. This connection is now actually safe. There are not many curvy tile remaining, but, tiles remaining, but there are some. As Picapella is, deciding, is deciding whether and where to deploy his last meeple, I suggest that you deploy yours on the like button to help with the algorithm for the stream and to um, introduce more people to the World Cup of Carcassonne and to competitive Carcassonne in general. This, this Catalan is now thinking. They do have a Spanish flag next to their name. Uh, which makes sense. It's also interesting how Catalan players are like technically eligible to play both for Spain and Catalonia. A Picapella gets a monastery tile. I have an idea for them how what they can do. With the move before, they were trying to set up some sort of block over here. But I think what they could do now, they could go over here, score two points, and um, create a field connection platform for themselves. But instead, I think they're throwing it. Instead, I think they are throwing in the towel as they just chose to score eight points without the possibility of getting the meeple back because. There are no starting tiles remaining. There is nothing that fits into this square. And it does seem to me that Oscaridis is cruising to a 2-0 victory. Well, Oscaridis is probably going to get one point over here as they do. Picapella gets the two pointer for his city piece at the right. Oscaridis gets a triangle, nowhere to use it, but more than enough to use it to win the game.
it will be close in points before we count the field, after which it will not be. So for the second game, Oscar Bustamante, the former Spanish national champion, is demonstrating his prowess in field plays as he gets 30 points for field compared to P. Capella 0 and holds on to a 21 point advantage and wins another match point for Team Spain as this is a clean win against the newcomer already. So what else are we having? I think we need to have a look at Tech C1. I'm interesting. I think we have some fans of this player in the chat. They are playing their second game. Oh, their third game. Oh, did I miss something? Yeah, they are indeed very quick. So Kasim Lola won the second one. And they are playing the decider, so why don't we watch that? They've started three minutes ago, or just a couple of minutes ago. Oh, and it's a fresh game. But the Catalan player with the red meeples has already been able to score four points for this city. They've started another one, but it is in a vulnerable position. Whereas Texas city on the left is a bit safer, despite the fact that Kasim Lola is building an attacking platform next to it. Uh, Kasim Lola is trying to complete their city and start a new one, but Texi, I think, making a mistake and making a double mistake. Whoa, I did not expect that. I thought a stronger move would have been to go over here and try to equalize Kasim Lola's city to prevent the threat of being completed. But and if you're going to go over here, then at the very least, meeple the road so that you get to equalize Red's road. Because Red could have like drawn a road monastery or something and placed it over here and meepled it and then get a curve and drop a farmer. And that's devastating. And now Texi opts for the blocking approach, chooses not to attack. Kasim Lola City not try to invade it, which is extremely risky at the start of the game, but maybe now they have a super strong move that they can to play over here and meeple the road. You have to meeple the road. Don't be afraid. Yes, this is an excellent move. What a sequence here by Texi. Kasim Lola now starts a six-point monastery, but Texi now, of course, will be able to meeple and equalize their city, but instead... They don't do that. They're really playing like, like there's no tomorrow, like their opponent is not going to complete cities or something. Taxi gets two points for the road and three points for the road and gets on the scoreboard. Kasim Lola gets quite fortunate in drawing the tile to continue his city before it's blocked. Two tiles still remaining that fit, into the, that fit into the square. It is not easy to complete the city, yet not impossible. Taxi, five meeples here and a, a substantial meeple advantage. Gets one extra monastery point. Kasim Lola tries to block a Taxi city, or at least starting doing so. Taxi, surely now they have to attack the city. We cannot allow it to stay open any longer. An excellent choice here by the Spaniard as Kasim Lola would have used this tile to finish the city, but instead they didn't, because they couldn't, so they just plainly got three points for the road and didn't meeple anything. I'm surprised by these players. Everybody's so conservative. Like, what's so scary about meepling this road? There are still six curves remaining that can give you four points in a meeple back. It's a very, very easy road to meeple. So maybe both players are being a little bit too cautious if you ask me uh so Kasim Lola who probably should go over here and score four points for the city and one point for the monastery is thinking whether to do so and I know why there is one move which they find tempting which they shouldn't do they want to go over here and still protect the fantasy of, of sometimes completing the city. If they go over here, 
they make it harder for green to put something over here and block the square. Harder, yet not impossible. That's why I think it is not worth doing. You can just take four points, sacrifice this meeple, let your opponent spend the tile on blocking the square, and that's it. The reason why I'm saying so is because if, if the city gets blocked, uh, then later on it, would, it will not be possible to develop the city as a ruin. But as I speak, and as Taxi is finishing yet another city on the right, the gamble of Casamola pays off as he is able to protect the city. There are now two healthy tiles available uh, that go into the square, which translate to a 75% chance of finishing said city. Kasim Lola gets a Dorito tile, thinks where to use it, but in the meantime, Kasim Lola paid the price for not meepling this four point road earlier because Texi was the first one to draw a cur curvy tile and take advantage from these four points. This is what happens when you are too conservative and you don't meeple stuff. Several moves here for this uh, for the Catalan. Maybe here, or here, starting a new city. Or maybe we go over here and meeple the road. Given that we are 16 points behind in the Catalan, we might need to start taking some gambles. And the idea with this road is that it goes, it goes nicely through the city, which we will need to complete anyway, probably in order to win. And then with another curve, we're going to have a nine point road going over here and this will be very efficient building. And the more I speak, the more I like this move, but instead they choose to continue the city, which also makes sense. Taxi now can go over here and attack the city, but instead they choose to clean up the city cap for four points at the bottom, which also makes sense. Kasim Lola gets a straight line. Where exactly do they use it? They might go start a new road over here because they desperately need points as they are 20 points and 3 meeples behind in this game. But if they go over here, this sort of makes this road a little bit more vulnerable. And if they want to be really efficient, they want to keep this free so that they can meeple this for, for the future and build out this 9 point road pattern that I was talking about earlier. So they decided indeed to keep this free and then they just simply added 1 point to their monastery. Sexy, getting a divider tile, trying to attack this uh, shared city, and I think they're going to succeed, which they, they could go either here or here, creating an opportunity for them to snatch that city and probably the win in the game. And they chose the former approach. There are still one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's still three Doritos that left over here that Green can use. Kasim Lola gets four points for the road. Quick points certainly welcome if you have only two meeples. Taxi starting a new city at the same time harassing Kasim Lola city. Kasim Lola desperately trying to prevent Taxi from taking taking his city away. Taxi, two quick points and one monastery point for a nine point lead on the scoreboard. Kasim Lola finally managed to equalize the city, but it cost them, and, and now they have only one meeple to play with. And as Taxi, maybe you actually don't go over here. Maybe you don't want to unify the city, or at least you want to delay that unification. Maybe you want to go, her, go here first to abuse this little three point city meeple. To keep your opponent without meeples for a long time, but instead they chose the more direct approach of simply gaining points and unifying the city. Taxi with a curvy tile. Will they go over here and initiate some kind of block? They do. There are only two tiles remaining that fit into this that fit into this square. Taxi draws a starting tile which would have fit here. For Kasim Lolo perfectly, but of course they're not going to use it here. Instead, they go over here. I would have dropped a farmer, by the way. I think a farmer was really 
a Jew there with four meeples, 13 point lead on the scoreboard. A bit of insurance wouldn't hurt because Kasim Lowell is not done. They can win this game if they get a dagger tile. The one remaining dagger tile. Go over here, drop a farmer for nine points, then go over here, get this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 14 point city. Yes, Af Alfonso, thanks for correcting me about the daggers. I just noticed it. Taxi with a monastery tile. Thinking where to use it. Decide to use it as a monastery. Greedy. Like it. Giving them six points to add to the 13 point lead on the scoreboard. In the meantime, thank you, Nalaheim, for sharing results. A Catala the Catalonia is also on the scoreboard as the most experienced, well, one of the most experienced, I think, one of the best shaped Catalan players Car with a screen name Carquinholes won clean against <laughs> Madcan. And Rafa equalized against Visitor Q. Sexy attacking the shared city and taking even more quick points. Kasim Lowell continuing the road. Taxi. Ooh, they now decide to meeple yet another city. Uh, and maybe they were hoping for a big city takeover, but but in the meantime, Kasim Lola. Uh, of course finish the shared city but now everybody has meeples both sides have gotten meeples back and anything can happen in this game if only Castum Lola gets this critical tile soon enough Texi gets a seven point monastery this is strong Castum Lola where will they deploy their two meeples they might go over here to continue the road they might go over here and farm I think that a farming move is in order but where exactly? That's the question. They decided that the farmers can go over here. Excellent choice. Uh, unfortunately for the Catalan, the Spaniard is the one to draw the dagger for this city. So this meeple of red will be deceased. And given the fact that, that there's still one, two, three, four, five, big, uh, three big tiles remaining, one quadruple tile and one triple city tile, then Texi can go over here and try to actually win over this city, but instead they chose not to do this. They just add one point to the monastery. Cast some Lola with a quadruple city tile. Difficult to find a good use to it. Instead just tries to block Green's monastery, but I don't think it's a very strong move because Green still has well, it's an okay move. It makes sense. But green has one money tile available to them. If green gets this, the triple city tile, then they get to go over here, finish their monastery, and meeple a six-point ruin clean. Kasum Lola. With a city splitter. Probably gonna go over here to add points to their farm. They go. They add points to their farm, but in a different way. Taxi gets one monastery point. Kasim Lola with a straight line, not much to do with it. Maybe gonna get a road point. Taxi gets the tile that they need for their monastery. Six points on the ruin, we will see for sure. After some deliberation. Alfonso uh, is saying that Pronom Feble uh, would say the world's strongest female player and probably the Catala Catalonia's strongest player bar Pere Vives uh, and maybe Devdin um, is not on the team this year. So this is interesting. Texi does not meeple the ruin, but instead they knew. They knew what they were doing. Because of course they now draw the one remaining starting tile that Kasim Lola had for their city. And to rub it in, they finish a city on their own of their own and they drop a three-point farm. And 
<laughs> to rub it further in this square three point road and even get this farmer to share the farm with red this is just evil Kasim Lola gets a curve nothing that they can do other than simply continuing the road Taxi gets a road tile which will probably go over here to score five points or over here at the top to score the same number of points. And unlike the Latvia-Ukraine match, we seem to view destruction after destruction after destruction. Cast from Lola with a curve. They're gonna continue their beautiful road over here, but this will not influence the overall at outcome of the game. So not being able to to complete the city, not drawing a 75% or certainly has to hurt. But they will need to learn to live with this. They're trying to delay the inevitable. Maybe a little bit hurt. They do finish their road eventually. And the points are being counted. This little city piece in the center ended up scoring only six points. City score much less than Carcassonne if they're not completed. And the city at the top scored only three points. So unfortunate tile draw for Kasim Lola, of course. It does seem that there is not that much they could have done in this game. But Taxi, quite technical. Picking up all the empty quick points. Meepling all the monasteries. Fearless. Maybe sometimes excessively fearless. As they were delaying uh, attacking attempts against their opponent's city. But their risk paid off as they win with a 22 point difference. And with that, they decide the match in favor of Spain because with that, the score is 3-1. There is only one uh, duel left to watch. It's going to be either 3-1 or 3-2. We're going to have to go back to Rafa versus Visitor Q. But we congratulate Team Spain for yet again winning against Catalonia. These are two very strong teams, but I think in they always have tight matches and like Spain ends up being a little bit ahead pretty much almost every time I think so this certainly has to stink for the Catalan team but great job for Texi and immediately of course Kasim Lola is now tilting and just hoping to find some random player to uh, uh, win against just so that they get to finish a day uh, with a win this is exactly what I would do in their situation this is exactly what I always do after a tournament loss. Unless the tournament loss is just so devastating that I can't take it for the day. But I'm mostly over that kind of thing. Well, anyway, Rafa is playing at a cider against Visitor Q. Hopefully they don't know the match result just yet. Hopefully they think that this game matters. And it does. It matters for prestige. It matters for experience. I need to remind you that... Uh, 2020 Rafa, although they are the reigning national champion of such a big Carcassonne country as Spain, they are still a newcomer in the Spanish national team. And they now get a Dolito tile to finish a huge road and get ahead on the scoreboard against Visitor Q. Visitor Q, however, has a lot of farmers here 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 and there's another one which is going to come over here but not yet as a visitor chooses to take four quick points first rafa dorito tile will he go over here continuing his ruin or over here continuing his city but maybe reducing the chances of completing it or maybe they are going to find something else. They chose to protect their field connection, which makes sense. 
and visitor connects to the field over here, but Rafa connects to the field like this and scores four points for the road. And he's currently now six points ahead. Visitor gets a curve. The main field is now equal three farmers versus three. The other uh, yellow farmer is on a secondary field, which is worth nine points. And look at that move from Visitor. What precision. A, a normal block would have been from here, but it is as if the Spaniard knew, uh, the Catalan knew that Rafa's going to have the starting tile in hand. And just before he's able to finish his hitting drop a farmer, he's denied. So in desperation, the Spaniard dropped the last uh, meeple on the farm hoping to draw something like this, something what Visitor drew, drew to connect to the field, but they didn't draw that. Instead, they have a tile which doesn't really give them much other than one point over here. And it seems that it is getting harder and harder for them to win. Oh, how unfortunate they were not able to keep the meeple in hand so they're not able to go over here and score nine points for the monastery this is quite unpleasant and visitor gets yet another road tile that rafa needed over here what's that with the with team catalonia and these tile draws well not team catalonia but visitor in particular and very precise block very technical play as there were two straight lines remaining so with this one simple move visitor made this connection impossible and this is amazing with this road move the spaniard got yet another farmer into the field through around this monastery this is so spectacular this is just beautiful of course, Rafa with more points on the board, six extra points, but a 30 point field does it for Visitor Q and Catala Catalonia gets another match point. Not enough to win this match, but enough to get aesthetic points. and a positive conclusion to an otherwise unfavorable outcome for them. So great fight for Rafa and of course the experience of Visitor Q has been paid off. Wins for Spain on tables number one, two and three and wins for Catalonia on the other tables. Okay, this was pretty quick. The match finished in just an hour, which is exactly what you expect with Iberian players. I did not expect it to last any longer. Did you notice how like Latvia versus Ukraine lasted 85 minutes and this one lasted 61 minutes. Okay, 82 minutes and 61 minutes. Still a very, very big difference. I'm tired from speaking because they're playing so fast. I just need to just shoot words. So, um, to make me feel tired, uh, less energized, because I still have like a lot of stuff to do today for the channel. After this, I'm going to shoot uh, a couple of videos because I really need to get some content out there. I know I've been saying this for a long time. So you can help with me the like button for the algorithm. You can help with subscribing unless you already have to, because this also helps, uh, you know, remind you when my streams are up. And uh, if you're feeling especially generous, as three of you have already have today, I'm so happy about this. I have enabled the super thanks button for which I will, of course, be extra appreciative. <laughs> oh, um, thanks for reminding about registering the teams. Actually, I haven't registered Team Latvia yet. <laughs> Oh, I haven't also registered for the Latvian National Championships on the 13th of April in person. 
this is also one of the reasons why I will need to take a little leave of absence from streaming. So uh, this is our last stream of um, Carcassonne preseason. Uh, and um, I will be streaming some more, of course, when I'm back for the start of the World Cup. But before that, hopefully there will be some uploads, updates, so stay tuned. I think that is going to be it. It was great to have you here spend this Tuesday evening with me. Hopefully you got something out of it, at least as much as I have. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you soon.